everybody. Welcome aboard. Dr. Peter Glidden in the bullpen today. Uh, early July 2014, I am your steadfast advocate for health, Dr. Peter Glidden. I'm a licensed naturopathic physician. And if you don't know what naturopathic medicine is, for goodness sake, where have you been? In order to become a naturopathic physician in the United States, you have to do four years of pre-med, which I did at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. You have to go on to uh, uh, matriculate and graduate from a fully accredited naturopathic medical school, of which there currently are five in North America. And then you have to pass national boards. Then you have to pass uh, state boards. Then you have to pursue continuing education credit every year. Uh, anywhere from 20 hours to 45 hours of continuing education, depending on which state you hold your license to practice naturopathic medicine in. And naturopathic medicine espouses the fundamental holistic belief that the human body is endowed with a God-given ability to fix itself, that the human body knows how to fix itself, the human body wants to fix itself, and it is the naturopathic physician's job to provide therapeutics, the intention of which are to support and promote your body's uh, natural ability to fix itself, which I think is what most people thought that their MDs did. Uh, but because we have an egregious lack of education here, uh, not only in the United States but all around the world, because people have just trusted uh, that their MDs know what's best for them, everybody is sick, everybody's lin uh, been led down a, a, a wild goose chase path, and we've all taken the wrong dog to the hunt. We've gone to the wrong medical professional when it comes to chronic disease. For goodness sake, you wouldn't go to a chiropractor for surgery. By the way, love chiropractors just came back from a chiropractic adjustment. A Dr. Matthew Peel in Western Springs, Illinois, perhaps one of the best chiropractors I've ever been to in my life. We're going to have Dr. Peel on in a number of days. He's a supporter of Dr. Wallach, uh, knows a lot about kinesiology, uh, is on the cutting edge of some really cool chiropractic stuff. And God willing and the creek don't rise, we'll have him on in uh, a couple days, a couple weeks in order to discuss uh, what he's up to. But my point is, right, you wouldn't go to a chiropractor for surgery, right? you know, because you know that that's not their thing. Well, you don't know that chronic disease is not the thing of the MD. You do not know that. If you did know that, which in fact is the truth, you wouldn't bring your body anywhere near the office of an MD if you're suffering with a chronic disease because the MD is trained to believe that once you're sick, you're screwed your body does not have the ability to recover from the condition. Your body does not have the ability to fix it. It is not the physician's job to cure the disease. It is the physician's job, the MD's job, to manage the disease with symptom-suppressive synthetic pharmaceuticals. And remember, we're not against drugs. I can prescribe drugs legally. And I don't know how many states, seven, eight, nine, ten states in the United States, I can legally prescribe drugs as a naturopathic physician. How about that? It's not the drug, it's how it's used. It's not the gun, it's how it's used. Thank God for penicillin, morphine, novocaine, and the sterile technique. But when MDs bring drugs to bear on your body, they are throwing them in willy-nilly uh, with complete disregard to uh, an understanding of the discrete pathophysiology, the, the discrete biochemical uh, systematic holistic pie which is the human body, and uh, remember, even when they're uh, not screwing you up with uh, six or seven drugs which conflict against each other and which cause more harm than you benefit from uh, by way of side effects, uh, even when the drug is prescribed effectively from their point of view, it's not prescribed to cure the condition. It's prescribed to manage it. The easiest understand the easiest example of this, of course, is Prilosec or antacids. You know, the little purple pill is the little purple pill uh, in, uh, an attempt to cure heartburn, gastroesophageal reflux, Barrett's esophagus. Uh, 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 any of that? No. <clears throat> the little purple pill's job is to manage your heartburn. The little purple pill's job is to eliminate the symptoms of your heartburn, and then when the pill wears off, guess what? You need more. Kind of like taking Tylenol or Advil for pain. 
It just numbs you out to the pain. It doesn't relieve the inflammation. It doesn't relieve the source of the pain. It just numbs you out to the pain, same way Novocaine does. But this is what the MDs do, and because of lack of education and because we trust, we're true trusting, we're too trusting here. And quite frankly, you know, we haven't been told the whole deal. We haven't been educated properly. A little bit of education in this regard would go a long way because in the same way that you're smart enough to understand you don't go to a chiropractor for surgery, well, you should be smart enough to understand that you don't bring your body to an MD's office if you're suffering with a chronic disease. You don't believe me? Well, you know, facts are a stubborn thing. The leading cause of death in the United States? The leading cause of death in the United States? MD-directed medical therapeutics. MD-directed medical therapeutics. Leading cause of bankruptcy? MD-directed medical therapeutics. Because what's the most expensive type of medicine? The one that doesn't work. And Dr. Wallach and I are the only ones saying this. The medical model in the United States, in North America, in Canada, in the European Union, quite frankly, all around the world, the medical system does not need to be upregulated, downregulated, tweaked, managed, nor massaged. It needs to be abandoned because it does not work. Hence the title of this radio program, Fire Your MD Now. Not because we're vindictive, not because we have an axe to grind, but because their therapeutics don't work. I mean, they don't work. Not for chronic disease, they don't work. And thank God the MDs are around for surgical intervention when it's necessary. That's their wheelhouse. A handful of infectious diseases, that's their wheelhouse. Trauma care, that's their wheelhouse, right? But the unsuspecting public brings their bodies to the MDs for everything. And because we do, we get sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. Um, by way of explanation here, uh, according to a brand new study, uh, this I'm reading from Medscape, Medscape.com, at least 29 pil- people in the U.S., that's 9% of the population, now have diabetes. That's type 2 diabetes, and 25% don't know it. <laughs> 9% of the U.S. population has diabetes, and, tw- and wh- 25% of those people do not have it. This figure, based on 2012 data from the National Health and Nutrition Examination uh, Survey, um, the National Health Interview Survey and the Indian Health Service and a 2012 U.S. resident population estimate. <clears throat> this is an increase of 3 million type 2 diabetics since 2010. Now, this report was published June 10th on the Center for Disease Control's uh, website. Uh, these new numbers are alarming, uh, they go on to say, and underscore the need for an increased focus on reducing the burden of diabetes in our country. blah dee 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 Now, why are more and more and more people getting sick with type 2 diabetes? Because the MDs are not trained in the, what causes type 2 diabetes, nor are they concerned with how to cure type 2 diabetes because there ain't no money in the cure. One type 2 diabetic treated for approximately 40 years will profit the medical industry anywhere from $300,000 to $600,000. Anywhere from three hundred to $600,000. So why on earth would they cure it? Now remember, medicine is a for-profit engine here in the United States. Now, nothing wrong with making a profit. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a champion of making profits. But when you monopolize the medical industry and you're not concerned with a cure and your intention is to just push symptoms, shove, sweep symptoms under the rug, but your patients don't know that you're doing that, that's a problem. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the MDs are so colorblind that, you know, metaphorically speaking, I mean, quite frankly, if it wasn't such a a big, bad voodoo daddy health problem all around the world, uh, it would be laughable. Uh, Pathophysiology. So uh, the MDs go on to say uh, that uh, uh, from a, a, a particular point of view, uh, some types of uh, uh, diabetes, and I'm taking this off of uh, Wikipedia, uh, most cases of diabetes involve many genes, with each being a small contributor to an increased probability of becoming a type 2 diabetic. Well, and, uh, answer me this. If it's genetic, then why doesn't it develop until you're an adult? 
if it's genetic, it should be happening since birth. I mean, Down syndrome. Does Down syndrome wait until you're 20 years old to manifest? No. It's baked into the cake. Truly genetic illnesses are baked into the cake, and you have them right out of the gate. Also, if it were truly genetic, you would not be able to manipulate it with diet nor exercise, which you can do. And I mean, this is a known fact. You can manipulate and uh, make your blood sugars better or worse with diet or and exercise or lack thereof. So if you can manipulate the pathophysiology of the condition with exercise and diet, then it's not genetic. It's not genetic. But the MDs completely overlook this fact, and this is why they're idiots before, the, before, during, and after the fact. Your medical doctor has a juvenile, old-fashioned, uh, outdated, uh, ridiculous, and dangerous understanding of the pathophysiology of most diseases, most of all chronic diseases. They're completely clueless about it. And the research that's been done about this isn't to come up with a, a cure for type 2 diabetes. It's to come up with a new drug that manages type 2 diabetes better and more effectively, right? This is the MD's whole thing. But because, you know, they're in the monopoly, and because their hubris is so large that uh, they believe their own nonsense, people are sick and suffering needlessly, even though in 1958 type 2 diabetes was proven to be uh, able to be turned on or turned off at will in laboratory rats uh, by giving or removing the uh, mineral chromium. Later studies showed that the mineral vanadium is extremely necessary in the body's ability to metabolize blood sugar. Now, we have thousands of people in longevity, uh, thousands of people in longevity who used to have type 2 diabetes. They changed their diet, got on board with a nutritional supplement program. They no longer have any diabetes. I'm going to tell you about 400 of them in a suburb of L.A. when we come back. Stick around, folks. It gets better and better from the holistic perspective, and it gets worse and worse from the MD perspective. I'm Dr. Peter Glidden. Stick around. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Check out the live video stream. Why don't you enter into the chat room, the online chat room at uh, the Dr. Glidden Show, the Dr. Glidden Show dot TV, the Dr. Glidden Show dot TV. You can also just check out a link on my website, Dr. Glidden dot dot com. Forty six people in the house now from all over the world. Uh, in a live chat room, talking amongst each other. It's a lot of fun. Check out the the uh, live stream, thedrglidenshow.tv. Now, uh, Dr. Wallach, a couple of weeks ago, gave a uh, live lecture in Los Angeles, and they were anticipating uh, 300 people. 1,200 people showed up. Let me say that again. They were anticipating 300 people. 1,200 people showed up. Uh, the fire marshal showed up and wouldn't let the lecture begin until they'd cleared the room, and they had to run microphones and speakers outside so people on the lawn who showed up could listen to the lecture. It was translated into Spanish because they're, of course, L.A., and a big Hispanic population showed up. Why did 1,200 people show up? Because 400 of the 1,200 uh, were struggling with type 2 diabetes a few months ago. Uh, heard Dr. Wallach lecture, heard one of Dr. Wallach's CDs, maybe saw one of my YouTube videos, uh, maybe visited my website, don't really know, but it was Longevity Nation that spread this word to the Hispanic community in Los Angeles. And 400 people within a number of months, all in the Hispanic community in L.A., uh, eliminated their type 2 diabetes. There's no more blood sugar issues. They're gone. They don't have them anymore. We're in the process of collecting data, collecting before and after blood work, uh, so that Dr. Wallach can publish uh, results somewhere uh, in some progressive medical journal that's willing to just tell the truth, in some progressive medical journal that's not uh, merely an extension of the f uh, f uh, f uh, pharmaceutical industry's uh, informational uh, campaigns. By the way, the last two editors of the New England Journal of Medicine and the Journal of the American Medical Association, when they retired, both said, and I'm paraphrasing, 
that medical journals have devolved into information laundering um, uh, programs for pharmaceutical companies. We're not publishing truth anymore. We're publishing pharmaceutical propaganda, right? So it's time we all picked our heads out of the sand and got a clue. Uh, type 2 diabetes is not genetic. Type 2 diabetes is not genetic. If type 2 diabetes was genetic, it would be impossible to manipulate type 2 diabetes with diet and exercise. Can you manipulate the color of your eyes, the color of your hair with diet and exercise? No. Can you change your sex with diet or exercise? No. The color of your hair, the color of your eyes, and your sex are baked into the cake genetic phenomena. Type 2 diabetes is not. But because the MDs, you know, are intellectually stilted, stunted, because they're cowardly before the facts, because they just haven't thought it through, and because, like lemmings, they just go along with whatever else their colleagues say without really thinking things through, this type of nonsense propagates and perpetuates itself in the popular culture. But, you know, the truth will out. 400 people, that's a pretty good result. Now... You know, that happened with inside of three, four months. Can you imagine what's going to happen inside three, four years? Can you imagine what's going to happen inside of three or four decades? Well, I can imagine what's going to happen. I'll tell you right now it's going to happen. Longevity is going to sweep the nation. It's going to sweep the continent. It's going to sweep the world. Because the truth will out. The truth will out. And, you know, I don't care how much biochemistry you know. I don't care how many PhDs or doctoral degrees you have after your name. I don't care if you even don't know how to spell vitamin. The only thing that matters is results. You can go to 100 health lectures this month, and you can hear very uh, smart, educated, erudite people get up in front of the room and, 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 and fill the room filled with smoke about this vitamin and that vitamin and this biochemical pathway and that biochemical pathway, and it all sounds very great. Thank you very much. But the results are the only damn thing that matter. With longevity, we get results, and that's why I'm such a cheerleader for longevity. I could be a cheerleader for any nutritional supplement company in the world. I could have my own nutritional supplement company, but I don't. Why? Because you can't beat Dr. Wallach, and I learned that a number of years ago. Why would I even want to try? Dr. Wallach's nutritional strategies, Dr. Wallach's nutritional products, developed and delivered by Longevity, eclipse in effectiveness anything I've ever seen. 400 people, no more type 2 diabetes. That beats a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Stick around, folks. Abby from Florida is up next. I'm Dr. Glidden, and this is Fire Your MD Now. Dun, 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 dun. Miami, 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 our old friend Abby, I think. Is it Abby? I call him back from Florida. What's going on, my friend? How's, how's everything going down there in hot and humid Miami? Hello? Hello. Maybe it's Abby. Yeah, yeah. Who am I talking to? Uh, actually, to his brother, not to him. <laughs> oh, all right. When tell me your name, please. Alibi. A L I B E Y. Alibi. All right, Alibi. Welcome aboard. It's nice to meet you virtually, anyway. Uh, thanks for calling. How can I help? Oh well, uh, I'll tell you what happened. About twelve days ago, I was in a three-day convention. I was sitting down for about eight hours a day. Um, there were a few stairs on the stadium. So, having that said, I started with pain on one leg, and I assumed that I was so out of shape that I, I started pain on one of my calves, <laughs> on my, just below the knee, and then I, I, I assumed that uh, that was because I was out of shape. But the pain started getting worse and worse and worse, and about six days after the pain started, I decided to go to to the emergency room because oh. I thought it ha I had a DVD. Yeah, I had an MRI idea. tech and I had an idea of what it could be. So I thought it was a DVD. Um, they did a Doppler ultrasound and they confirmed that I, yes, I do have a gastronomous um, DVD 
Um, All right, now for the, my listening audience, that's a deep vein thrombosis. So that's a clot very deep in one of the, the veins of his leg. Okay, go ahead. So, well, I was admitted in the hospital that day. The doctor says that the risk is very low because it's just it's below, it's below the knee. So it's, it's not really that risky that the thrombus is going to be uh, released and cause a pulmonary embolism or cause any other th- symptoms. The risks are very minimal, but that I should get into in anticoagulants to make sure that, uh, that I keep the, uh, the, blow, the flow of my blood, you know, thin, make sure that I'm then that basically, yeah, that was the treatment. So I'm taking Surauta, 15 milligrams twice a day for three weeks and after that the plan is that after those three weeks the same medication is I'm going to take 20 milligrams once a day for about 30 days and then that I should check a hematologist later on to do to run some blood tests and to see what what's going on Supposedly, well, 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 well I, have a, I have a better idea I have a better okay. idea why don't you tell him to take that crap why don't you tell him to take that stuff? Take, call him back and say, Doc, I'll make a deal with you. I'll take it if you take it. I'm going to take this stuff every day. I'm going to follow your advice if you take the stuff every day and follow your own advice. And if he agrees to do that, then, you know, you can double down and go ahead and do it. Also, um, I'd, I'd encourage you by way of education and by way of gaining perspective to ask him what caused the deep vein thrombosis. Did you think to do that? Did he tell you what caused it? Well, they asked me if I had an injury on my leg or anything, and I don't, re- honestly, I do not recall anything. The only, what I do recall is that I was sitting down for many hours, and many times I have my three-year-old sitting on my, right on top of my knee, well, look, so Albie, that, if, if sitting down was the cause of deep vein thrombosis, then everybody in the United States who works at an office would have deep vein thrombosis. Every bus driver, every long-distance trucker, um, every race car driver uh, would have deep vein thrombosis. Every horseback rider would have deep vein thrombosis. So, so your MD was unable to tell you what caused deep vein thrombosis. And all he was able to do was recommend that you go on synthetic prescription drugs, the intention of which was to thin your blood, keep your fingers crossed, and hope that you don't get another deep vein thrombosis, right? Yeah, basically, yes. Uh, How do you feel about that? Not happy. That's why I'm calling you. Okay, well, I'm glad that you're not happy. By the way, you sound exactly like your brother. It's kind of scary. As I think I'm, you sound exactly like your brother. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Are you are you older or younger? No, two years younger. Two years younger. Is he the oldest? Yes. <laughs> All right. We, he's done. He's done some remarkable things with us. His testimony is among is in the top ten. Uh, at least as far as I'm concerned in Longevity Nation. Um, so look, here's what I want to tell you and everybody else in the listening audience, okay? Now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we have a problem here in the United States, and the problem is that the medical industry is monopolized by the pharmaceutical companies. It's monopolized by the pharmaceutical companies. The only thing that can cure anything is a drug. It is a law that you cannot say you can cure a chronic disease unless you're using a drug. You cannot cure anything without a drug. I could have a million people with deep vein thrombosis. They could all eat, you know, squid ink and cure themselves of the deep vein thrombosis. And I would be unable to say that we could cure squid, we can cure deep vein thrombosis with squid ink. However, Dr. Wallach has risen to the challenge and, um, the Food and Drug Administration has um, a, a structure in place by which you can lobby them to secure something called a qualified health claim. Now, really, the only way that you can make a health claim here in the United States is if you do 40, 50, 60 million dollars of research uh, under certain parameters have the research published and the research that you do points to an you know an inevitable conclusion which is beyond the pale of uh you know any type of of misunderstanding so you can do that 
But who has, you know, 60 million bucks to, to throw around? Well, the pharmaceutical companies do, but the average Joe, the average doctor it does not. So there's another way that you can uh, get good health information to the public. Now, remember, the Food and Drug Administration is not there to protect the American public. The Food and Drug Administration is there to protect the pharmaceutical industry. But nonetheless, Dr. Wallach has sued the Food and Drug Administration a number of times. Two of his more noteworthy lawsuits were to secure something called a qualified health claim. So in order to get a qualified health claim, you have to show up to the FDA with truckloads of published research, hundreds and thousands of published research papers which support your position. And when you pile all of this information on the top of the desk of the director of the FDA or the FDA committee, then you know it's embarrassing for them to say, well, no, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, there just isn't enough information here for us to, to, to say what you want to say. So one of Dr. Wallach's lawsuits was about the relationship between essential fatty acids, EFAs, and clot formation in the body. So there is so much published research, Albie, there is so much published research about the relationship between essential fatty acids and healthy blood that it is laughable. There's so much research that we were able to sue the Food and Drug Administration. Dr. Wallach was able to sue the Food and Drug Administration to secure a qualified health claim that allows us to say that essential fatty acid supplementation virtually eliminates the risk of thrombotic stroke. So if your blood is unhealthy and starts clotting inappropriately, it's not because you have a prescription drug deficiency. <laughs> and it's not because you have a bad gene. You know, maybe if you've been to New Orleans lately, you might have a voodoo curse. I don't know. But it's probably because you have an essential fatty acid deficiency. So, and you know, the fact that there are, is literally truckloads of published research that supports the notion between essential fatty acid supplementation and healthy blood, the fact that your medical doctor did not know that is tantamount to your medical doctor not knowing anything about Novocaine. You go to a medical doctor and he doesn't know what a suture looks like. You go to a medical doctor, he's never seen a bandage before, or he doesn't know what a blood pressure doesn't know what blood pressure is. I mean, you would expect your medical doctor to know these things. There is so much research published about the relationship between essential fatty acids and clot formation, it's not even funny. And because he never mentioned any of this to you means that he's, you know, not he's a slacker. He's just not doing his job. He's not doing his homework. He's not paying attention to the published research. And by the way, all of this research is in mainstream medical journals. It's not in some fly-by-night holistic medical journal, you know, published by some uh, grateful dead hippie in the mountains of Northern California. This is mainstream medical stuff, and he doesn't know it, which means you need to never darken that medical doctor's door again because they're just not on their game. They're just not on their game, man. They're not on their game, period. So you might want to visit Facebook. You may want to visit Wellness Warriors with a Z, Wellness Warriors with a Z, and okay. talk to the commander on Facebook. The commander is a good friend of mine. He, he, I often interview him here on the radio show. He's a registered nurse. He's an Army vet. And when I first met the commander, he had 17 clots in his legs. And he was on more prescription medications for this, more Coumadin, than anybody I've ever met in my life. And he was also over 300 pounds, and he had blood sugar issues, type 2 diabetes. With medical nutrition and diet change, all the clots in his legs went away. He lost 100 pounds, and the type 2 diabetes disappeared. <laughs> and he's a nurse. I mean, he was he's the guy in the back of the ambulance keeping you alive while they're transporting you to the hospital. I mean, he really knows his stuff. And he would be a good person to get, you know, a personal testimonial about um, about the relationship here between essential fatty acids and um, healthy blood. So if I were you, what okay. I would do to support and promote healthy blood, uh, you know, viscosity in my body, how much do you weigh? Uh, 155 around there. Okay, so here's what I would do every month for the next six months. All right, I would do one healthy body, start one healthy body 2.0 liquid. Oh, 
uh, one healthy body 2.0 liquid start pack. One healthy body pack 2.0 in the liquid form. One of those. Okay. I would do one bottle of Prohoba Omega. That's P R O J O. Yeah, P R O J O B A. Prohoba Omega. One bottle of Prohoba Omega. And one bottle of multi EFAs. One bottle of multi EFAs. And three bottles of ultimate selenium. Three bottles of ultimate selenium. And last but not least, two bottles of nightly essence. Nightly Essence has an uh, interesting uh, biochemical in it called natokinase. And natokinase is an extract, believe it or not, from earthworms. And natokinase has been clinically proven to dissolve blood clots. Clinically proven to dissolve blood clots. So two Nightly Essence, uh, one multi-EFA, one Prohoba uh, Omega, three Selenium, and one um, healthy body start pack 2.0 in the liquid form eliminate the 10 bad foods and the 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 upshot of all of this stuff is that in addition to the uh, your blood getting healthier and you know approaching the proper viscosity uh, you should see positive effects across the board because right this is a holistic program and the intention here is to support your whole body because everything's connected man right so Right, we would anticipate better energy, better mood, better sleep, better sex drive, better appetite, better everything, kind of sort of the same way that happened to your brother. Give it a shot and don't disregard the importance of eliminating the 10 bad foods. That's very important, especially for you. So check it out. Call me back in four weeks. And uh, I'm looking forward to another remarkable testimonial like your brother. Let's keep it all in the family. Appreciate your call. Stick around, folks. Wendy in Canada is up when we come back. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Peter Glidden here. What a remarkable story in the chat room about a young man, 24 years old, developed depression and anxiety after he found his father dead on the treadmill, for goodness sake, uh, because the MDs missed an obvious sign and a symptom for progressive heart disease. He had really bad medical care. They just were, not, again, not on their game. The kid found his father dead on the treadmill. Imagine that. He got depressed. Uh, they put him on every drug in the world, uh, did nothing. They finally put him on a benzodiazepine, Xanax, which, in my opinion, should be outlawed. And any medical professional prescribing Xanax should be uh, quarantined to a, a tropical island in the middle of the Pacific inhabited by rabid animals. And, you know, when he started to come off of the benzodiazepine, the Xanax, he developed unbelievable, horrible side effects that he's now dealing with. I mean, the side effects of the withdrawal of the drug were worse than the original stuff he went in for. And the, and the MDs, the psychiatrists who prescribed it, sleep very soundly at night. There's no harm. There's no foul. There's no problem. There's no consequences for them. Why? Because it's good to be king. That's why. You think MDs with a general family practice are completely out of sync with the reality of the human experience? Well, psychiatrists doubly and triply so because your psychiatrist is trained to believe that consciousness is a function of biochemistry and that uh, everything stops when you die, that uh, all of this talk about a spiritual energy, a spiritual essence, a life force, a vital force, is just some type of hippie hallucination. And that really when you have a problem with the biochemistry of your body, well, it's only a matter of time until that happens because your body is a unstable bag of biochemicals to begin with. Only a matter of time until something breaks. And it's not the damn doctor's job to fix it. It's the doctor's job to manage it. And when you try to manage somebody's bio brain biochemistry, that's like throwing a wrench into a gigantic gear system. You're going to screw something up. It should be mandatory. It should be illegal for a psychiatrist to prescribe a drug unless they have already taken it. It should be illegal for a psychiatrist to prescribe a drug unless they have already taken it. I mean, if we pass that law tomorrow, everything would change. This young man's up against it. So what do we do? Well, we say, look, give your body the raw materials it needs to fix itself. Stop eating food that's coming up to works. Keep your fingers crossed and get the hell out of the way. Let your body fix it. 
So in order to support and promote healthy brain biochemistry, the recommendation is one healthy body start pack 2.0 in the liquid form. One healthy body start pack 2.0 in the liquid form. A two selenium, uh, one bottle of multi-EFAs, and one bottle of plant-derived minerals per 100 pounds of body weight per month. Eliminate the 10 bad foods. And to that program, add one extra bottle, either of the Cal Toddy, which is a liquid calcium supplement, or the Beyond Osteo FX, which is another liquid calcium supplement. Max out with the liquid calcium, eat a diet high in cholesterol, take those nutritional supplements, and forego all other methods. Forego all other methods. Bringing your body to a medical doctor, to a person with an MD who practices medical nutrition is a fool's errand. You should stop it now. You should not even consider it now because those people are the worst people who practice medicine on the planet. And I know firsthand because I know the guy that's started that whole uh, process. His name's Jeffrey Bland, a PhD. He, his claim to fame was he was the uh, uh, first or the last, uh, uh, you know, the, what, what's, I'm losing my, my thought process here. I didn't take my EFAs today. He was the last uh, student of Linus Pauling's. Right. He was the last uh, uh, Ph.D. student under Linus Pauling. Now, you know, I shouldn't speak, speak ill about people who aren't here to defend themselves, but nonetheless, I am not at all an advocate of orthomolecular medicine because when MDs attempt to use vitamins and, and, and nutritional supplements, they use them through the reductionistic method. They use them to try to manipulate biochemistry in the body rather than, and that's then in a reductionistic way, rather than using them to support the body's ability to optimize its structure and function. It is a fool's errand to bring your body to a medical doctor practicing integrative medicine or orthomolecular medicine. Stop it. Don't do it. Follow my advice instead and let the proof of the pudding speak for itself. Hour two coming up, folks. Then we really are going to go to Canada and talk to Wendy. I'm Dr. Peter Glidden. Join the live stream. The Dr. Glidden Show. TV. Stick around. Knockout punch sounds good to me. Dr. Batman. I think I'm going to change my name to Dr. Batman. Uh, we're growing a non militant army of the informed here, a non militant grassroots coalition of the informed people who have seen the light of medical nutrition, who have walked around the undiscovered country of uh, science based, clinically verified, holistic medical nutrition and who are going out of their comfort zone, out of their way to tell everybody in their world about it. Because this is how, in fact, we're going to change the world. Worked pretty good for the church, didn't it? Uh, you know, started with two guys and look at it now, all word of mouth. Worked pretty good for Buddhism, didn't it? Started with one guy and look at it now, all word of mouth. And this is how we're going to change the world with a non-militant grassroots coalition of the informed. Join Longevity now. If you were um, driven or suggested <laughs> to come to this website by somebody, get with them to get more information about Longevity and how you can interface with Longevity. There are two ways you can work with Longevity, either as a customer and you can get our nutritional or Longevity's nutritional supplements at the wholesale price um, and or you can become a Longevity distributor, a Longevity associate, a Longevity business owner. And uh, Longevity will pay you to spread the message of health recovery through science-based clinically verified medical nutrition. Get with the person who invited you to this radio program to get those questions answered. If you found us completely on your own, then dial up 855-347-3696, 855-347-3696, and someone from Team Glidden will be in touch. Wendy from Canada is up. Hey, Wendy. Thanks for hey. the phone call. Uh, thanks for waiting. You are live. No problem. Hey, Dr. Batman, I like that. I know, right? I call Wonder Woman. <laughs> All right, great. Hey, please, <laughs> please give me some information about estrogen dominance. Oh, yeah. And if you could give me that before I start crying or yelling at you, that would be awesome. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, yeah, man. so, yeah, yeah, I really, I really feel for you married. 
Uh, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So it's a tough thing, man. You know, this really, this really speaks to um, an interesting physiological phenomenon. You know, if I was an evil genius and I wanted to uh, screw with humanity, uh, an easy way to do it would be to put stuff in the water supply that messed up people's hormones. Because hormones affect every single aspect of the human body all the time. It, 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 the hormones are everywhere all the time. And when your hormones aren't right, you're not right. And I don't care if you're a man or you're a woman. I don't care if you're a child. I don't care if you're in your reproductive years. I don't care if you're perimenopausal, premenopausal, whatever. If your hormones aren't right, you're not right. And when you're not right hormonally, everything's wrong. Um, it is a big, bad voodoo daddy. It's like walking around with, uh, you know, a cloud over your head all the time, but it's been there for so long that you forget that it's there. Um, it's a problem, right? Now, you know, MDs will tell you that, well, estrogen dominance is a term that was developed by somewhat progressive um, physiologists who, you know, saw hundreds of women who have all kinds of mood disorders, and they figured out, well, son of a gun, you know, this is a hormonal thing. And so they do blood work, and they do investigative analyses, and they see, well, son of a gun, and all, the, all of the women who are having these complaints, on a relative scale of things, there's more estrogen than there ought to should be. Hence the term estrogen dominance. Now, when estrogen dominance goes extreme, there are wild variants of estrogen that can be formed, um, which actually are directly related to breast cancer, right? So estrogen um, all by itself. By, by the way, estrogen, there's no such thing as estrogen. Estrogen is a collective term for three different biochemicals estriol well estrone o n e for one estrone that's you know estrogen one um estradiol uh, di for two and estriol uh, t r i o l for three um estrone estradiol and estriol these three estrogens collectively are referred to as estrogen. So really in estrogen dominance, you know, it's one of the three that's, that's you know, elevated. It's either estrone, estriol, or estradiol that's elevated. And inquiring minds, of course, want to know, well, why are they elevated, right? I mean, that's a good question to ask, right? I mean, why is my estrogen funky and my sister's isn't? Why are my estrogen levels funky and my cousins aren't? Why are my estrogen levels funky and my next-door neighbors or my daughters aren't? And MDs have absolutely no answer for this. Because remember, again, the MDs not concerned with what causes disease. And this is, this is a travesty of biblical proportions. If everybody in the world understood that their MD wasn't trained in how to cure disease and that research is not concerned with what causes disease or how to cure it, there'd be a freaking revolution here overnight. I mean, there would be. Because the major cause of human suffering is medical conditions. I mean, it eclipses war. It eclipses poverty. It eclipses uh, uh, infectious disease. Everybody is sick all of the time. Everybody, everywhere is sick all of the time because they don't have a clue and because the MDs have completely let us down. You know, I mean, this is my theme. This is the theme of this radio show, and I and I keep pounding it because it's true, and everybody needs to hear it, especially people with estrogen dominance, because your life sucks, and you know, through no fault of your own. I mean, and it would be one thing, right? I mean, Wendy, it would be one thing, you know, if you were in a automobile accident, you're in a full body cast, right, or in a wheelchair, or walking around on crutches, because then. People, you know, in your life would take pity on you and then would help you and would understand, well, you know, you're, you're up against it. And you need some help. But with hormonal diseases, you can't see it. And it's just as bad as if you were in a full body cast, but nobody sees it. And so I think it's triply bad. Um, no kidding, and I'm not attempting to make you cry. I'm really not. I'm not attempting <laughs> no, to No, I have to cry. clarify. My life rocks. I mean, I'm a longevity <laughs> distributor, so of course my life rocks. You know, um, I may be exaggerated a little bit there, but, you know, just going through menopause or haven't really started yet, but it's just a heavy, heavy, heavy period, the insane 
clotting and yeah, crying a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but and, I am and... healthy generally. I haven't done anything mainstream in over twenty years. I do yoga and Reiki, and I'm a happy person. You know? Well, all right, and I get that, and that's good. But still, you're symptomatic, and I got to tell oh, you yeah. something. Yeah, I'm a stickler for details here, and, and language is important. And by the way, thank you for your service with Longevity. I mean, no kidding, that's a big deal. And you're not healthy. I mean, if you were healthy, then we wouldn't be having this phone call because you wouldn't have estrogen dominance and you wouldn't have all of these symptoms that come and go, right? I mean, that's the very definition of somebody who's not healthy. I understand what you mean. You know, you don't have cancer, you don't have high blood pressure, you don't have uh, arthritis, right? But really, I mean, really, right? Anybody with a chronic persistent symptom complex, by definition, is unhealthy. And if we uh, people all around the world need to start languaging this uh, correctly because it's important. Uh, but, but in any event, so what? We, so is all of your plumbing intact? Are the uterus and ovaries, everything still there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then you're in luck. Um, what we do here to support and promote healthy hormone levels is support and promote your liver because your liver is intimately involved with regulating hormone levels in your body. Your liver is intimately involved with regulating hormone levels in your body. And, you know, I mean, honestly, right? I mean, you know, the backbone's connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone's connected to the leg bone, and like that. Everything's connected. So when it comes to hormones, we need to give general, holistic, all-around body support, plus a little extra, you know, hormonal support and in this regard we focus on the liver so how much do you weigh uh, about 175 so what I would do for three months is I would do uh, four bottles of selenium a month in addition to uh, the healthy start pack and I would do the healthy brain and heart pack um, with the liquid calcium I would do the healthy brain and heart pack with the liquid calcium because that way you get more essential fatty acids at a better price point and you need more essential fatty acids because that's the other piece of the pie, um, the other side of the coin when we're attempting to support healthy hormone levels is we give essential fatty acids in appropriate amounts or in excess of appropriate amounts. So um, one healthy brain and heart pack per 100 pounds of body weight per month. If you're 175, you'd need to do two of those. Four bottles of selenium a month and two bottles of Prohoba Omega. Two bottles of Prohoba Omega. And a couple times, three times a week, I would have a fresh squeezed vegetable juice mix, which is most awesomely fantastic for liver health. Um, it's a combination of beet juice, uh, carrot juice, and Granny Smith apple. Beet juice, carrot juice, and Granny Smith apple. Uh, start with one ounce of beet juice, um, then work your way up, if you can, to four ounces of beet juice at a time. Uh, you know, you can add the carrot and the apple juice as much as you want to make it taste, you know, good. It's a really great taste combination. But the fresh squeezed beet juice here is the secret sauce for liver health. And if you get on board with this program, if you ride this horse for four or five or six weeks, your urine and your stool will turn red and you'll think you're bleeding. So don't freak out. You're not. It's just the beet juice, right? Um, but beet juice, uh, when I was in naturopathic medical school, John Bastier, who's now uh, you know passed on to the other side, and the college that I went to, the medical school that I went to, was named after John Bastier. He was a very famous naturopath in his day. Um, he gave a lecture to my class and told us a remarkable story about a hepatitis C case that was completely cured. Uh, well, we can't say cured because he didn't use a drug, but completely eliminated with just with beet juice. Just, that's all they did, just beet juice. Beet juice is a most awesome nutritional support um, program for your liver. And when you add beet juice in on the back of Prohoba, uh, um, uh, the, uh, uh, Prohoba Hepal and the Ultimate Selenium and the 90 Essential Nutrients, I mean, that's a slam dunk, man. Now, the only other thing that you can do... And I would do this as an experiment for 21 days, three weeks in a row. I mean, no kidding, Wendy. Become the cholesterol queen of Canada. 
just go crazy hog wild for cholesterol for 21 days, three, three weeks in a row, and see how you feel because all of your hormones. I once had a genetic disease. Hold on. Yep, we're back live, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Peter Glidden, your steadfast advocate for health. This from Dr. Ken, who's uh, an insider and in the chat room right now watching the live video feed. He says, I quote, I once had a genetic disease that was cured by nutrition with ease. So my gene was not broken, but this truth goes unspoken by those emperors called MDs. Ken, you are hired. Indiana is up next with Derek, I think. Welcome aboard, Derek. You are live. Hey, how are you doing, Dr. Glidden? I'm good, man, but I'll get better, God willing. Thanks for the phone call. How can I help? Well, um, you answered it uh, just about. I was calling to find out about <laughs> hepatitis C and hepatitis B. What would you recommend? But it sounded like you said beet juice, uh, prohoba hepa, and uh, the 90th essential nutrients with selenium. Yeah, that's correct. And I'll tell you a story. I have a, you know, before I knew anything about longevity, of course, I was a naturopathic physician in private practice. And I've been treating a guy for 25 years now. Uh, no, that's a lie. For 23 years, I've been treating a gentleman for 23 years now with hepatitis C. He developed hepatitis C when he was in his early 20s. Now he's in his uh, early 60s. He's alive and doing well. And all of his buddies who also got hepatitis C at the same time, they're all dead. And he's the only one that did alternative quote-unquote medicine and he's doing quite fine so you know I have direct evidence that you can in fact make a great deal of progress um, in the health of somebody even with a nasty illness like hepatitis C and you know that's what we do now interestingly enough hepatitis C you know you would think right that if you were a medical professional who dedicated their life and went through all of this schooling and your whole thing is to become a doctor and end human suffering, you would think that you would want to investigate certain things. There are known cases, hundreds if not thousands by now, probably thousands, of known cases of spontaneous remission of hepatitis C, spontaneous remission. Now, hepatitis C is a viral infection of the liver, and it is supposed to be, uh, you know, a, a life-ending event because there is no cure for hepatitis C, and once you've got it, it's only a matter of time until the virus, viral infection, kills you, right? But there are lots and lots of people who have had hepatitis C on Monday, and they wake up on Tuesday, and there's no more hepatitis C. It's gone. It's completely gone. It's gone. It's no longer there and you think the medical community would investigate that you would think they would try to figure that out but again they don't why because it's not their concern to cure disease and honest to god man honest to god if people look i'm not bashing the mds i'm just telling it like it is i'm just telling it like it is right i mean look Let's all get used to the fact that Democrats don't like war and Democrats like social programs and Republicans like war and Republicans don't like social programs. I mean, that's just the way that it is. For better or for worse, that's just the way that it is, right? We all right. just need to understand, well, it's MDs are not concerned with curing disease. You know, that's their thing. I guess it's okay. It's not my thing, but... If people really understood this, there'd be a riot. I mean, there'd be, uh, there it would be bad. Um, well, yeah. well, I had one more question too. One Go more ahead. question. Um, well, you know, when you when you talk to different people that are interested in coming to longevity, either as a customer or as a distributor, you know, because they heard enough information to spike their curiosity. Sometimes people that you know have the quote unquote, you know, I say this with a little bit of uh, humor. Uh, research, they want you to research, you know, uh, these other vitamin companies or compare one that they really think is good to longevity. And I said, well, I tell people you need to talk to Dr. Glidden because he, uh, he, you had talked about 
200 vitamin companies that you would win over. Uh, can you kind of tell us about that, where, the, you know, the difference why it's, it's really kind of a waste of energy? Well, all right. So the next time somebody gives you a hard time about vitamins and says, oh, you know, I need to do some research, this, that, or the other thing, here's, what I, here's the Zen sword that cuts through all the nonsense, okay? I want you to ask them to define a vitamin. Say, well, that's fantastic. Um, by the way, uh, what's a vitamin? Just ask them what a vitamin is, because they won't be able to answer that question. Most people have no earthly idea of what a vitamin is, and yet they're all about doing their own Internet research to figure out which vitamin supplement has the best vitamins. They don't even know what a vitamin is, but they don't know that they don't know what a vitamin is because they're so full of themselves and oftentimes this simple question will create you know a, a, a brain squeak and, and give you a good people kind of hard to believe for newcomers that we can get this much traction with you know chronic disease just with medical nutrition hey but you can and if you stick around with us long enough you're going to see uh you know testimonials that'll bring you to freaking tears Right, we're still on with Derek in Indiana. I don't think I answered his question completely. Are you still there? Come on in, Derek. Oh, yes, yes, we're still here. Great commercials. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, so basically the understanding here is that, you know, the, the biochemistry of clinical nutrition is, is rather a sophisticated process, and it's nothing that a layperson should even begin to think that they could have any ability to understand that area whatsoever. I mean, it's a complicated thing. You know, it's like the income tax, you know, laws. It's a complicated thing, man. You need an accountant to figure that stuff out. You need a lawyer to figure out the laws, right? You need an automobile mechanic to figure the automobile out. You need a dentist to figure out what to do for your tooth. I mean, if you had a bad tooth, you wouldn't go to the Internet to try to figure out how to fix it yourself. But when you have a bad liver, you go to the Internet to try to figure out how to fix it yourself. And I'm going to compare vitamin companies one amongst the others. It's a fool's errand. And yet people do it all the time because of lack of education. People just don't know any better. I mean, it's a problem. I mean, it's a big problem here. And, you know, I have to kind of be a bad cop in this regard because people don't even know what the hell a vitamin is, and yet they're going to do research to figure out which vitamin company is better. It's nuts. <laughs> so here's what I tell people. If your son or daughter wanted to learn how to play basketball, and for the same amount of money, you could hire Michael Jordan or your high school basketball coach to help them learn how to play, who are you going to hire? Well, you're an idiot if you don't hire Michael Jordan because he's one of the best basketball players in the world, right? Well, right. the best medical nutrition physician in the world is Dr. Wallach. Dr. Wallach literally wrote the book on medical nutrition. Dr. Wallach's book on medical nutrition, which cost $25 million, is in the Smithsonian Institution right now. It's a national treasure. So... Uh, you need to bring in an expert when you are dealing with uh, a medical nutrition situation. And you can try to figure it out yourself. But if you don't even know what a vitamin is, if you don't know the definition of vitamin, how effective do you think you're going to be at figuring this all out? You're not going to be effective at all. So rather than try to become the expert, you should just lean on the expert and dr wallach is the unrivaled expert in science-based clinically verified holistic medical nutrition so you know the short answer is here um do what dr wallach says uh, why because dr wallach has more research um under his belt and more clinical experience under his belt with medical nutrition than any other licensed physician in the world and it would be prudent to start with dr wallach's strategies try them on for size and let the proof of the pudding be in the eating does that make sense right 
Right. I mean, it all boils down to that, man. We can talk about biochemical pathways, and I can tell you about quality control parameters inside of nutritional supplement companies, and I can tell you about the difference between organic and synthetic vitamin preparations, and I can tell you all this stuff, which ultimately is meaningless, because in the final freaking analysis, you just need to trust somebody. You do. You know, you trust your automobile mechanic. I mean, you trust, you know, that the uh, uh, whoever it is that's in charge of regulating, you know, the production of gasoline, you trust that the gasoline in your pump is not going to make your car explode, right, because it's been tested and it's passed certain quality uh, certification. You trust that the steak that you buy and the chicken that you buy at the supermarket isn't contaminated with E. coli because there are professionals at work whose job it is to take care of that. Well, guess what? There are professionals at work whose job it is to bring medical nutrition into the mainstream, and it's Dr. Wallach. I mean, if you kind of, if you want to lean on somebody for professional medical advice about nutrition, then you're an idiot if you don't follow Dr. Wallach's lead. I appreciate everything you're doing down there in Indiana, Derek. Keep up the good work. And this is in the final analysis, folks. The only thing that matters, right, is results. So our recommendation, uh, eliminate the 10 bad foods and try the 90 for life. Get on board with the appropriate healthy start pack for 90 days. 90 for life for 90 days. I don't care what your condition is. I don't care what it is. I don't care how long you've had it. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how much you weigh. Give 90 for life 90 days to make a noticeable, measurable, remarkable, positive change somewhere in your body mind. Um, because really the only thing that matters is results. And the only reason that I'm a cheerleader for longevity is because longevity's protocols produce more consistent results than anything I've ever seen. And in, you know, 25 years of clinical work with uh, medical nutrition, I've seen a lot. So trust me, check it out. You're going to love the way that you feel. Let's see who's up next. Looks like Jody from Kansas is up. Hey, Jody, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Hi, thank you for uh, taking my call. I had a quick question for you. I have recently been introduced to the supplements, and I thought it was a fabulous idea. I'm a nurse um, by trade, but I oh, stay we home love with nurses. my kids. Man, we love yeah, nurses. Yeah, and it all makes we, sense. Yeah. Um, but I have several chronic diseases, so yeah. I wanted to get your opinion of what I should be taking. All right. Um, well, you tell me tell me each disease one at a time, and I'll tell you real quickly what we believe is the, the genesis factor thereof, okay? Okay. Most of mine are autoimmune. I have um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which gives okay, me Okay. St- all right, good. I'm going to stop you right there, okay? Okay. So... Now, I'm going to do a little a little shameless commerce here, okay? Okay. On my website, drglidden.com, I have something called an insider subscription service. It's $20 a month. You can cancel at any time. And as an insider, if you go in and purchase a subscription right now, you will gain immediate access to an online library that I have put together of over 110 hours of health webinars that I've put together. 45 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes at a time. I did an entire webinar on autoimmunity. Really? Um, oh, yeah. And, I'm, and I explain it from, from soup to nuts, and especially for medical professionals. No kidding. It'll be the best 20 bucks you've ever spent. And, you know, look, if you think it's hogwash, if you don't like it, if, you, if, if you know, we'll, we'll give you your money back. I mean, you can cancel any time. There's only so much I can tell you in a couple of minutes on the radio and because you're a medical professional i would encourage you wholeheartedly to check out the the archives that i have on my website all right but now okay all right i'll give you the short answer okay so the mds look at somebody's blood who's suffering with certain set of symptoms right so they've got you know all the classic symptoms of an overactive thyroid and then they do the blood work and they see that there are elevated levels of inflammatory markers in the blood and there's also an antibody that's there that's not present in the blood of somebody who's healthy, right? Right, yep, right. Therefore, the MD assumes it's the antibody that's causing the illness. Exactly, yes. And that's never been proven. 
the antibody from our point of view is the result of the illness it's not causing the illness it's kind of like if you found a dead animal on the side of the road you know and it's been there for a week and, and you turn it over on the underside of the animal it's going to be filled with worms and bugs and all kinds of little creatures that are eating up the dead decayed diseased body right uh -huh. well it is our opinion that when there is chronic inflammation anywhere in the body I don't care if it's in your joints, I don't care if it's in your thyroid, I don't care where it is. When there is a chronic low-grade inflammatory process in the body and your body is under neutrified, your body is generating dead tissue. Tissue is being destroyed all of the time and the fire department of your body does not have the resources necessary to put the fires out to stop the inflammation and to stop the tissue destruction. So what happens? you've got lots of microscopic tissue, dead tissue in the body. So what's the body going to do? It's going to try to get rid of it. Because the inflammatory process, it can't stop. Because it's your the fire department of your body's run out of water. The fire trucks are showing up at the fire, but they don't have any water, so the house is going to burn down. So the inflammatory process that is chewing up the thyroid on a you know a sub on a molecular level on, on a microscopic level is present all of the time the body has wisdom the body knows son of a gun well well, well boys we can't put the fire out what are we going to do well we're going to get rid of the stuff that's burned down we can do that we don't have any water but we've got hooks and ladders here and we've got men and we can take away all the you know the burned up lumber and that's what they're going to do so from our point of view the antibody is the result of the disease it's not the cause of the disease and so the mds have gotten it backwards that completely uh -huh. so what do they what do they do they recommend immunosuppressant therapies right yes i've been on those before uh-huh yeah, because they think that the immune system, for some reason, has gone haywire, and the body, for some unknown magical reason, is just starting to develop antibodies against itself, and the body has become a vampire. It's chewing itself up. It's become a zombie. It's chewing itself up, and they have no earthly idea why it's happened. It's nonsense. Yeah. It's, be it's reality <laughs> by consensus, and it's become a runaway train, right? So what we believe is well look the body has wisdom the body wants to fix itself the body knows how to fix itself and the antibody isn't there to destroy the body the antibody is there to chew to get rid of the old disease tissue that is accumulating every second of every day so from our point of view then the operative question here becomes well what the heck is causing the inflammation right <laughs> and, right yeah right and what do we do to fix it well from our point of view, the main causative factor of any inflammation anywhere in the body is a, is a function of two things. Number one, you're unwittingly consuming food that's pro-inflammatory, so you need to stop eating food that's causing inflammation. And there are 10 foods that we've identified to do that. You can get that yeah. list for free on my website, so stop eating the 10 bad foods. Number two, we need to support the fire department of your body, right? You know, we've got the right. immune system, and now we've got the anti-inflammatory stuff. So how do we support the fire department of your body? Well, that's easy. In order to support the fire department of your body, the recommendation is one anti-aging healthy start pack, one immortalium, and two selenium. One anti-aging healthy start pack, one bottle of immortalium, and two bottles of selenium per 100 pounds of body weight per month, plus eliminate the 10 bad foods. Now, you know, once we've done that, then we can start to give a little extra thyroid support in this case, right? Or, you know, mm -hmm. if, it, if it was uh, a joint issue, you know, an autoimmune disease of the joint, we'd give extra joint support or whatever. So to give extra thyroid support, the recommendation is topical application of the essential oil of myrrh m-y-r-r-h myrrh oil applied topically um, liberally and visit a chiropractor and have them assess the cervical curve in your neck because there should be a nice little s curve in your neck and if that curve is not present the nerves going to your thyroid are going to be funky and if the nerves going to the thyroid are funky your thyroid is going to be funky 
So make sure the architecture of your neck is correct, so the nerve transmissions are correct. Use the myrrh oil and get on board with the medical nutrition. Life is good. Stick around, Jody. Yeah, we're up against it. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Peter Gooden here, your steadfast advocate for health, finishing up today's show. Uh, talking to Jody from uh, Kansas City, uh, Kansas, I think, uh, who is a nurse, and we love nurses, love to spend a lot of time uh, talking to them. So I'm going to bring her back up, and we might have time for Kate's success story from Utah. So in any event, Jody, are you still with me? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so, all right, so Hashimoto's number one. What's the second thing? Uh, the second one is the, the very common diabetes. I'm type 2, but I take insulin. I progressed very fast from the oral meds to insulin. All right, it was proven in 1958 that one of the causes of type 2 diabetes is a simple mineral deficiency, uh, chromium, and, and further research in the 70s showed vanadium also at play. So when somebody has type 2 diabetes, our recommendation is to support and promote your body's ability to optimize its structure and function you got to use the secret sauce, and that involves mineral supplementation that's heavy on vanadium and heavy on chromium. But you don't just need vanadium and chromium. You need a whole bunch of other trace minerals. So to the program that I just recommended, um, you mm-hmm. would add for blood sugar support a product called Sweeties. Sweeties. And the recommendation yes. would be one bottle of Sweeties per 100 pounds of body weight per month and one bottle of plant derived minerals per 100 pounds of body weight per month and you should are you you should you got to be careful now because i've seen blood sugar issues i've seen type 1 diabetics on this program be able to cut their insulin dosage down by 75 percent in in 14 days <laughs> so, that would be awesome <laughs> well all right so but my point is you know might take two weeks, might take two years. It's, it's not going to take two years. But my point is you need to maintain the discipline where you're measuring your blood sugars every day. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. And as they come down, adjust the prescription medications appropriately, and there's no harm and no foul there. Okay. 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 The other um, the, the other big one that I have, but I'm wondering if, if it's related, since it's the autoimmune, I have, they say it's lupus on my face. I have... Uh, lesions on my face. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's kind of like a different arm of the same octopus, right? So yeah, it's yeah. right. Yeah, it's the inflammatory process that's you know working itself through the body, coming out wherever it can. So okay. there's nothing new to add there. But be advised, you know, you've got a lot of things going on here. Yes. And so in order to optimize the nutritional intervention, you would be encouraged wholeheartedly to stay away from all 10 bad foods like they're the plague, okay? Yes, yes. All right. That's going to be really hard to do, but I'm, I'm willing to do it. I well, it's, it. Uh, well, I get it's hard intellectually, but in practice yes. it's it's actually not that difficult. And, and honest to God, Jody, three months from now you'll be saying, what, what was my problem? This is easy. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out. I have to move on. I appreciate you very much. Appreciate your call. Now go get your health back. All right, Kate. You got two minutes to tell us your story. Welcome aboard. Hi, Kate, Kate from Utah. Oh, Hello. Kate. All right, oh, we hi. have. Like all right, we have a minute and a half, Kate. I left you. I left the best for last. So tell us what's going on. <laughs> okay. Um. I had. I just want to do a quick report to you. I, I met you at a convention. I told you I'm a mystery seizure girl. And I just want to report back that after going on the healthy brain and heart pack. Um, extra selenium, of course, and the Z radical and the ultimate daily. My seizures have diminished to nothing. Basically, <laughs> I've had one for a month. It's been three months. I've only had one, and it was about a month ago, and it lasted five minutes, if wow. that. And I have not had one since. I am. This has been going on for thirty years, and I am so excited I can't stand it. So thank you very much. Oh well, well, well. So Man, I know I, what's happening. We'll bring the listening audience. So for thirty years, how frequently were you having seizures? I could have up to seven a day, but they mostly were at times they were extreme, and at times they were like two or three, four a week. That was an average, about you know two to four a week. And, and for the um, last, and, and then now they're gone. There, I haven't had one. I had one in the last month. It lasted less than five minutes. 
the others were always 30 minutes to two hours long. Man, I that. love I love my job, Kate. You go, girl. <laughs> That I love it too. <laughs> is a million dollar story. I appreciate you very much. I appreciate your trust more than anything because, you know, uh, you had to believe me to start doing it, right? Yeah. Um, you're the greatest. Call back anytime. Wish we had more time to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, God willing and the creek don't rise. See you tomorrow. Same time, same station. Live long and prosper.